morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to uh, worship this morning. Uh, so today is January the 6th, uh, 12 days after Christmas. Uh, January the 6th uh, is the day of Epiphany, and so it, uh, this year falls on a Sunday, so we celebrate Epiphany on Sunday. Uh, we pray together Divine Service Setting 1, that's on page 151, uh, so follow the order of service. Uh, starting on page 151. Uh, we sing our first hymn together, though. It's hymn 397. 397. Servant of Christ, and by his authority, 
I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now speaking out of the intro, it's printed on the back of our bulletin. The congregation speaks the bold portion. Behold the Lord, the ruler has come, and the kingdom and the power and the glory are in his hand. May he judge your people with righteousness, and your poor with justice. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold the Lord, the ruler has come, and the kingdom and the power and the glory are in his name. Our service continues on page 152 as we sing, Lord have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
the Gentiles, lead us who know you by faith to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. and scribes of the people, 
He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now profess our Christian faith together as we speak the words of the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is on page 158. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of Epiphany. Epiphany. All right. Epiphany means 
to be made known. So when it's dark and you want to find something out, what do you do? Flashlight? Flashlight? Or you turn on a light, right? Just like the sun is a big light. So Epiphany makes who know? Jesus. So Epiphany, we celebrate Jesus being made known. So the wise men know who he is. Uh, the whole world gets to know who he is because Jesus is, is the sun who shines in the darkness of our sins and takes them all away. That's what today's about. Knowing Jesus, knowing he shines into our hearts, and then we can also then be just like stars. You guys want to be a star? Yeah. Oh. So you guys can let other people know about Jesus. <laughs> stars in this world. So let's pray. So repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for being born into our world. Thank you for the wise men who came to worship you. Help us to be like them. Always coming to you. In Jesus' name we pray.
of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, this film is rated R. It's the worst sentence a kid can hear. After the tauntingly exciting and thrilling movie trailer plays over and over, begging us, come, come and see. For me, it was the year 1998. And the movie was The Matrix. What kid wouldn't want to see a movie where the hero could dodge bullets in slow motion? Who could resist watching a movie that is based on a futuristic world that's run by computers? What preteen boy wouldn't want to see a movie with action-packed gunfire and morphing reality? And yet I couldn't. At age 12, hearing that one letter, R, Smash my dreams of seeing that movie that, in my estimation, the horrors the world was going to see. It was restricted. It wasn't for everyone. But there was a time when God's steadfast love and faithfulness was restricted. It wasn't for everyone, but only for his chosen people, Israel. Fancy church name, we call this is the scandal of particularity. Anyone outside of the people of Israel was restricted from the one true God. And they were probably worshiping other gods anyways. So even those, though, who married in or converted to the faith of Israel were still not fully on the inside. And they too were restricted from some of the major things in Israel's religious system. The restrictions went so far that the people of Israel had one large room in the middle of the most giant temple in Jerusalem. And that one room was called the Holy of Holies, where God's own presence dwelled. And only one person a year, the high priest, could go into that one room to place bread on the altar. It was restricted. It really was not for everyone. But God created all people. And God desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So God began to reveal his plan little by little in the Old Testament. To Abraham, he, Abraham, he gave this promise. This is already in Genesis chapter, three, uh, chapter 12. He, uh, God gives this promise to Abraham. He looks at Abraham. He says, Abraham... I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, this is the important part, in you, Abraham, will all the families on the earth be blessed. Already, to Abraham, God is promising that through his chosen people, he will bless all people in the whole world. Through a descendant of Abraham, God will lift that restriction to come to him. In our Old Testament lesson from today, we have another foreshadowing of God lifting his restriction. Isaiah tells us about a light, it's like I told the kids, that shines on all people. Arise, 
shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. All nations, not just the people of Israel, but all nations will be drawn to this light. And we know that this light is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We know that he is the descendant of Abraham who brought the blessing of forgiveness of sins and everlasting life to all people who would have faith in him. And so then we have this curious story about the three wise men. Our gospel lesson for this celebration of the epiphany of our Lord is a very familiar biblical account of the wise men bringing their gifts and their reverence to this baby king of the Jews born in Bethlehem. Another and maybe more fitting name than wise men for these three guys would be uh, Magi. You might have heard that term before. So these Magi are Gentiles. They do not believe in the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Rather, they most likely served and worshipped several other gods. And they probably were even servants of kings and rulers who oppressed the people of Israel at one time or another. They, the Magi, were restricted from the people of Israel. In fact, the Magi appear only a few other times in the Bible, but most notably in the book of Daniel chapter 2, where King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon called all of his religious cronies, because uh, he was having these dreams, he called all the religious people that he could think of to help him interpret the dream, and among these were Magi. They came and tried to interpret his dream, but, you know, they failed, and only Daniel could interpret his dream. The Magi were even almost duped into King Herod's plan of telling him where the Christ child was born. But God came to them in a dream and led them elsewhere, verse 12 tells us. They did not know the full measure of of what this child king actually meant to the world. So all these things beg us the question, why did God lead them to Bethlehem? Why them? Why not the Jewish religious leaders from Jerusalem? What was the purpose of God leading these heathen Gentile magi to bring kingly gifts and to bow down for a meek child. Well, that very question, dear friends in Christ, is answered. That God did it. It was our God that led them to His Son to show that His salvation, His grace and favor, is no longer only for His chosen people of Israel. It is for all people throughout the world who, like the Magi, would go to the King of the Jews, would go to the uh, God in flesh, bow down and give their gifts to Him. It is our God who brought them to Bethlehem by means of that star. It is our God who came to them in a dream to get them out of Herod's evil plan. It is our God who uses them still today as a model for us, and to show us all of God's wondrous work in the world. Scripture doesn't tell us what happened to the Magi after they left. Whether they continued in their reverence and faith of the Christ child when they returned to their homeland. doesn't say. But it was our God who first implanted in them the need to see the Christ child, and it is our God who got them there. And so it works for us today. When we were baptized, God planted in us the seed of faith. Through the works of the Holy Spirit, through God's Word, and through His gifts and the sacraments, 
We grow continually in that faith. We are over and over brought to that Christ child at the cross and the empty tomb. Through these things we are daily brought into the presence of our Savior, who was born King of the Jews, whose birth was broadcast in the whole world by the Bethlehem star, and whose miraculous workings and teachings brought life and faith into our world. So during this season of Epiphany that begins today, we focus on those miracles and the events in the life of Christ which make His divinity known in the world, that makes Him, that makes the world know that this is God in flesh come to save us. The Gospel lessons from the next coming Sundays until Lent focus on the beginning of Jesus' ministry as He calls His disciples as he heals people, as he does all his miraculous works. But we remember, especially today, that Christ was first made manifest to the whole Gentile world, so that includes us, through the example of the Magi. We, like the Magi, come to our Savior with less than perfect histories and backgrounds. But since Christ has died for our sins and has risen from the dead to defeat sin forever, we come to Him in faith, knowing that He will shine on us in forgiveness and in favor. No one is restricted who will bend their knee bring their gift and worship our Savior in faith. But I need to finish up one loose end this morning. A little lighter note is I started out with that metaphor of rated R, restricted. And on uh, Christmas Eve, we always focus on God's plan being unexpected. Shepherds didn't expect it. Mary didn't expect it. Uh, it was all unexpected. On Christmas Day and the Sunday after, we realize that God's plan is unstoppable. And today, He quickly reminds us that God's plan is unrestricted. And it's not rated R. See, dear friends of Christ, I got to see the movie The Matrix when it first got to theaters. Because the, the movie theater that happened to be in my hometown in South Dakota, small town South Dakota, it did let kids into the movie theater to rate our movies. You know, with discretion, of course, if we paid an extra dollar. <laughs> Not even making that up. <laughs> so Christ paid our price and truly made God completely unrestricted for us. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even into life and last. Amen. We now take a moment then to worship our God with our eyes and love.
your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he also took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
164. And 164 as we sing, thank the Lord.
of bylaws of this congregation establishes various offices to which men and women were elected and appointed to serve. In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this week. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The Apostle Peter writes in the first epistle, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To Him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. So you all have been elected and appointed to serve in varying offices of this congregation. You have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility at Holy Cross Lutheran Church. You are to work with the pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. A holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation. It is especially important that you, as office bearers in this church, show yourselves by word and example to be faithful in him in service and Christian devotion. So in the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. So, uh, congregation, you who are gathered here, uh, beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers of Holy Cross Lutheran Church. So do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified and his work be done in, in our midst? If so, then, uh, answer, we do. Amen. The brothers and sisters in Christ, I therefore install you as officers of Holy Cross Lutheran Church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive his blessing, the Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices. That you may be good and faithful stewards for the glory of his name and the good of his people.